talk about, you know, how to embed Jedi culture in your company. Um, this includes hiring, promotions, decisions, and power. Now, while we get Diane set up and on stage, I'm actually going to invite um, Cheryl and Gerard and Property on stage to introduce themselves. So I guess if we could just get started a bit, can you just talk a bit more about your background and you know why you're a part of this panel? Sure. Um, well, I've been in the natural products industry for a long, long time. I was with Cliff Bar and Company for 10 years, three years as CEO. Then I co-founded a company called Plum Organics and um, did that for three years. Went and ran the Center for Entrepreneurial Studies over at the uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business, where I got to meet with a lot of different entrepreneurs. And then ran Rebel um, Super Beverage Company for four years, which was an amazing experience because it was started by a nonprofit to create a future without human trafficking. So that's what we woke up to do every single solitary day. And then finally, I got the opportunity to co-found an organization called the Jedi Collaborative, which I'm so lucky to get to work with Jazz as part of that, to help the natural products industry to be able to realize justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in everything that we do. Um, next, Gerard, welcome to the screen. Um, would you mind sharing a bit about yourself um, and why you've been invited to this panel today? Great, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Gerard Nixon, and I am in supply chain with Kehi Food Distributors. I've been here for about three years, and I've got responsibility for our supply chain strategy and support teams. Um, one of my other responsibilities at KEHI is that I do chair and lead our diversity and inclusion council. And we are really excited about the work that we are doing in diversity and inclusion um, with KEHI. And we're also really excited about the partnership that we have as an early adopter with JEDI. So I really appreciate the opportunity to share more of our story and to share you know, how we are moving through uh, the diversity and inclusion journey. Wonderful. Um, thank you, Gerard, for being here. So while we wait for Prop D, um, I guess we can kind of you know, dig in a bit. Um, I guess I have a question for Gerard. So an element that the panel recognizes is that JEDI work has been thoughtfully and intentionally woven into strategic orientation of a company. And I'm curious about how Kehi has been able to do that. And, you know, possibly what are some challenges that the company is wrestling with in doing that? Absolutely. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, first and foremost, I do want to say that, you know, we are very passionate about the work that we do. Um, and we have really been adamant about um, giving back to communities uh, through a, a foundation that is called Kehi Cares. And you know what we do throughout the world is we go on mission trips and we really help those who are, are misfortunate um, in, in life. And we've actually partnered that with uh, Care Trade, Kehi Care Trade, which um, advocates or sponsors, promotes brands that advocates for higher purposes. Um, and so we do feel as though we are knocking on the door of, of, of JEDI initiatives. Um, and really, we really wanna be about pushing the envelope when it comes to um, dismantling those barriers that keep those folks who are marginalized um, on the outside and really helping our uh, natural and organic industry to grow whether you're a vendor or a person um, who is really interested in, in creating a, a grocery store um, is really where we're wrestling today is how are we going to get into uh, that line of work and really advance um, our in industry in that, that manner. Just thanking Gerard for his comments um, and the work that Kehi has decided to do. Um, and now I'd like to acknowledge that Prop D is now with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you don't mind sharing with people just um, a bit about your background and why you're on this panel today. Yeah, sure. Um, so 
I am the head of HR here at Nutiba. And, um, you know, something that's really important to me, as well as our executive team here, is to just share and learn and grow constantly here in this work environment. We have a dynamic workforce. Um, about 75% of us are a manufacturing um, employee. So this work is so important for our Richmond community. We're here located in Richmond. Um, we are constantly trying to improve, learn, make changes, um, not just for it being a quota or an HR initiative, but something that we really want deeply coming from the top down um, for all of our team members. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty impactful. And I guess, can you share some thoughts on what the Jedi journey has been like for Nutiva? Yeah. Um, it's been an ongoing learning and adapting process. Um, I won't, I'm not going to lie and say it's been easy. I think um, just especially with the current environment, it's, it's been a challenge, but we're, we're up for it. Um, like I said, Nutiva is a dynamic workforce. So the only way we knew we were going to be successful with these Jedi initiatives was to ensure that our executive team our leadership team truly took ownership of these initiatives um, and that they deeply believed that they wanted to make this impact. And I know that is why we are slowly making these positive changes and our employees notice that. Um, I'd say over the, so over the past year, we've rolled out unconscious bias training. Um, we created our own Jedi recruitment and hiring best practice training for our managers. And we recently completed a Jedi statement that embodies Nutiva's Jedi beliefs. And that's actually in our handbook. So every employee has to sign that. Um, and like I said, it's it's been challenging along the way, especially with current events. So we've had to pivot and make uh, on some initiatives. Um, but the bottom line is that Nutiva, for Nutiva, none of these programs would not have been successful without the support of our leadership team backing these Jedi committee backing of these Jedi initiatives. Absolutely. And that is very important. And I think that really leads into yeah, this, this next question I have, which is directed towards Cheryl, which is, you know, I think it's critical that those watching really understand that Jedi work is so profoundly challenging because it requires us to understand there is a relationship between our individual lived experiences, um, the social identities that we carry, and the systems that we are working in. And so, you know, can you share how Jedi helps companies in understanding that balance? You know, that's why this work is, as Prapti said, it is really challenging work. I mean, this is changing a whole world view. We, we've been living in this white paradigm for 400 years, and our industry is no different. And it takes, it takes, as Prapti said, a real journey to be able to truly understand it and embrace it and move it forward in a, in, in a regenerative way. So what we find, so just to, for a bit of background, the Jedi Collaborative is a web-based plan for action that people can find on JediCollaborative.com. But that just gets you started. And uh, both Kehi and um, Nutiva are pilot companies. And what we find is really important is that we connect with every single company that wants to go on a Jedi journey. And we do that because it is so critical that leaders understand that this is not a journey for the faint of heart. This is really hard work. This is changing the way we think about the world and everything that we do. And that requires so much work at the individual level. Yes, it requires us to understand socially and emotionally what, what our impact is on people. Um, it requires us to dig deep to see some of the things that we're doing with humility to say, my God, I'm having an impact here. I don't, I'm, I'm not um, continuing to do it but it is the impact that I'm having and I need to take responsibility and own it and be transparent about it because that's how we all learn together. So one of the things that we do as part of the early adopter program that um, Prapti and Gerard are a part of 
is not only do we help companies to understand what the steps are to go on a Jedi journey that feels right for their company, such as Crafty talked about, writing the Jedi vision statement to help guide all of the work, but also to work together in learning groups, learning and support groups, but because this, this work, it, it's not clear. There's not a clear path. And the best way forward is to support each other in community so that we all get better together and help each other get through some of the massive struggles that are really a part of it. And you know what? At the end of the day, this is about being truly deeply human. Mm. Thank you for those words, Cheryl. And I, I agree with everything you said. And I guess just to really harp on, um, you know, I think this is a good question for Popti, seeing how, you know, your organization is doing this work. Um, how do we get companies to understand, you know, the realities of this work? And what do companies need to understand in terms of the resources that are required to do this work with impact? Yeah. Um, I think companies need to understand that there will, you will have to make pivots along the way. Um, I can give you an example with Nutiva. You know, we started this work as a Jedi um, pilot over a year ago. We made really great changes um, and improvements, um, but recently we hired three new executives for our team. And the reality is, is that we kind of had to pause and um, get our next these next executives up to speed of what we have already accomplished and where we want to go. And also we needed to realign with them our goals and objectives for our Jedi initiatives with this new executive team. Um, in terms of resources um, that are required to do this work with impact um, for Nutiva, we had our executives, this new team, go through a coaching workshop to ensure alignment of our mission and values which also include Jedi. Um, and also kind of to go back to what um, Cheryl said was that there our Jedi collaborative, we also have um, a Jedi collaborative website and there are tons of resources on there. Uh, and if you, anybody who's watching has not seen that website, I really encourage you to go. There is so much information that you can utilize with your executive team all the way down to your staff um, and your, your workforce. Um, but I think in reality, like I keep saying, this is an ongoing learning process. Mistakes are going to happen. And as long as we recognize and try to continue to do better, that's all employees want to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really harping on the fact that this is the journey, um, something that will be on the path for, um, for a while. But that's a good thing. That's how change happens. Systemic change happens. And so speaking now to Gerard, um, what keeps you going in doing this work? And can you share some of your learning in chairing the new DEI committee within your company? Absolutely, Jasmine. Um, what, what keeps me going is, you know, just knowing that there is a need and that we haven't necessarily reached where, where we want to be um, and, and helping to change the look and feel of, of the industry. Um, I can tell you from a CAHI perspective, we definitely want to thrive in, in diversity and inclusion. Um, and really, we see JEDI as a way of, of making sure that we do that. We're very early in our JEDI journey. Um, and so we are still somewhat figuring out the what and the why, um, but definitely we'll be reaching out to Propti um, to, to understand her learnings along the way and making sure that we get our senior team bought in. Our senior team is supportive of our, of our diversity and inclusion um, initiatives, but now that we're going to introduce the JEDI portion, um, we really, you know, look to do that. As far as lessons learned along the way, what I will say is we are finding our voice when it comes to um, speaking out on matters such as social justice or social, social injustices and really begin to, beginning to get a cadence with that. Um, we are also really beginning to get into the trainings. So I know unconscious bias training, um, embracing differences, uh, things such as that, and really beginning to take a look at, um, you know, the five common gaps when it comes to diversity and inclusion, um, so that we were really making sure that we're hitting on all cylinders 
um, when it comes to this work. So it is it is a long journey. Um, I think one of my lessons learned is while 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 you may have support, um, it's also demonstrated support that you would like to see as well um, in this in this work. Um, so it, it's it's almost um, it's almost like the anti-racist um, paradigm shift that has been introduced here right recently, right? Like it's not enough not to not be racist, but you need to be anti-racist. So in the same sentiment, it's not enough to be supportive, but also hop in and demonstrate your support. Yeah, I think that's such an important point, Gerard. And you know, it's 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 interesting. It, it's very easy to think about this work and pop pop property mentioned that er, this earlier as kind of like HR work. We got to check some box, boxes on the HR side and we'll be okay. And we, um, on the from the Jedi collaborative perspective, really emphasize to companies that this is very holistic. Everything is connected. So company culture is one aspect and an imp incredibly important aspect of this work. And that's not just about hiring, it's about how we treat people and unconscious bias and how we make sure that we uh, that, that that work is ongoing. It's not a one-time training, but it's a truly uh, shift in how we help people to feel like they belong and that their voices are amplified and they have power in decision making. That is absolutely critical. But also connected to that is how we think about our consumer, our innovation, our marketing. We, we, we have to shift the way we do that. We're in a multicultural society. The way we've been doing things in this industry, reaching a very small sliver of people is not going to work. We're not going to grow. If you just want to do it, talk about business tactics, we will not grow in that way. Um, so we have to shift the way we think about the consumer and that goes hand in hand with the retailer, right? Gerard, I, don't, I know you, you all feel believe very strongly in that some of your efforts to give more space to BIPOC companies on the shelf. And then finally, importantly, in terms of our community, uh, how are we treating our growers? Are, are they part of our team? Are we supporting their livelihood? Who are we choosing for an advertising partner? Who are our co-packers? We have to think, rethink everything. And if one of those elements is not working, the whole house of cards falls apart. It's all connected. We're rethinking a new paradigm of business, period. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, when you say it's all connected, literally it's all connected. So how do we really do the systemic change? And I guess just really building on that, Cheryl, um, I guess, you know, you kind of already shared a bit, but can you really just share some of, you know, your own learnings, maybe your own personal and professional learnings about, you know, your Jedi journey? Yeah, it's, it's been really hard. <laughs> Jasmine, you've gone through this with me personally. I, I, you know, you think, at least for me, I, you know, I've read so much in the last two years and I try to immerse myself in it. But yet what I've realized is every the air I breathe is of white privilege. And to really peel that back and understand that and how that impacts me and how I impact other people is incredibly painful. And, um, and it makes me wonder like, what things have I done in my past that I've so not intended that has a ripple effect on other people? And uh, you know, all I've been trying to say to myself almost every night, okay, take a breath. What do I learn today? Um, what can I share with other people? How can I be as vulnerable as possible so I can get to the next layer of this work? And sometimes I wanna, honestly, I wanna run away and just say, I can't do it anymore, it's too hard. But yet, I think, I think about all the people that I care so much about and I want to see, I truly wanna see in a power shift in this industry I'm, I'm on the older side of it. My legacy that I can bring to it is to say, this is how you step aside and welcome in new leaders into this industry. So we see the shift that it takes to accomplish our mission as an industry to bring healthy food to all, uh, healthy products to all people. 
and also to really be able to grow well into the future so we're a regenerative industry and it's it's painful it really is yeah thanks for sharing that with us cheryl and i guess i would like to now i guess just pose a bigger question you know to everyone what's the one thing you want to make sure that companies understand about jedi and to answer this question um i'd pass it to gerard first if you don't mind taking a stab at the question sure um the one thing that that companies should know about jedi the, the work of jedi um i, I think is uh, to much of what Cheryl has, has just said, right? I think it is um, that JEDI will lead to building better communities that are um, more sustainable, that are, you know, very vibrant and, and definitely, um, you know, healthier, especially in their food choices. Um, as I listened to Cheryl, you know, some thoughts popped into my head as to where, you know, Kehi could possibly help with, you know, how we approach food deserts, for instance, um, in, in, in spaces such as that. So I, I really do think that, you know, the, the way that, that JEDI is laid out, it, it forces you to think beyond just, you know, um, being benevolent and, and giving back to the community, but also uh, giving back in a way in which, you know, as Cheryl has said, is regenerative. So. I definitely believe that it, it helps everyone, uh, this type of work. Absolutely. Um, Prapti? Yeah. Um, I think to continue to engage your team through openness, communication, and to lead by example, I think as leaders in the natural food sector, we have the ability to impact people's lives with nutrient-rich foods. So let's critically think about where, what we're doing and how we're helping people of color and people of color communities. Um, let's not just stand on the sidelines. Let's do the hard work. Let's make this change happen. Right on. And Cheryl. Yeah, you know, I, I just, I wanna just jump on what, um, Gerard said, because I think that's really important. I, I just loved how, you know, kind of like that click of, wait a minute, we can, as a distributor, we have the power with the trucks that we have in all these neighborhoods every day to come to communities and help to support them where they're not getting access to this food. I, I think those kind of like ahas in terms of how we ha can have a profound impact on people's lives is kind, of, is kind of the state that hopefully as we all grow in this work, we start to get to, to say, wow, I never thought of it in that way. And being really holistic to think about how we impact people's lives, that is freaking huge. And that's how we learn together and challenge each other to say, well, wait a minute, you have that asset, you can be that. Um, but thank you both, um, all of you, for answering that question. Thank you all for joining us for this panel. Um, it's been really insightful and amazing. And, um, you know, there's just so much people can do to address the systemic issue. And I'm glad that, you know, we're all taking this step and showing that it's possible to make this systemic change. And, and Jess, I just want to say one more thing. I, I think we uh, we've all kind of emphasized how hard the work is, and I, you know, there's that balance between hey, how do you how do you make sure that people feel inspired to take this on and take this forward while at the same time acknowledging how hard it is, and to me they go together uh, because and think about the hardest things you've ever done in your life, and you come out of it and you're like. That was the most amazing thing. It has absolutely changed my life because I'm such a better person because I went through that. And this is this is one of these one of these instances where it's not going to be a check the box. It's going to be do really hard work. And my God, we're all going to come out of it as better human beings, a better industry, better companies. It's it's really you know what sometimes suffering is really what makes it the best thing in the whole entire world <laughs> the most impactful in our lives Absolutely. Um, what i got from that is you know it's this is still very personal um 
and you know whatever we do is gonna impact us in all dimensions and impact yeah. everyone so thank you for sharing that cheryl um thank you all for your time thank you cheryl property and gerard and we will be back shortly